In this video, we're going to continue our work with trigonometry and look at a brief introduction of when to use the cosine rule or the sine rule. In our two previous videos on trigonometry, we've looked at the trigonometric ratios or trig ratios and Pythagoras theorem. We've used those to find missing lengths and angles in right angle triangles. Let's just recap the Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem says that we can find a missing length in a right angle triangle if we have two known sides. So if we have this one, let's say that, that is 3 and this one is 4, 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted gave us 5. We will still use Pythagoras theorem for right angle triangles when we have two known sides and we need to find the third. We then looked at the trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine and tangent. We could find a missing length in a right angle triangle if we had an angle, so let's say we had 30 degrees, and a known side. So we could use the trig ratios, for example, to find this one by using the sine, or this one by using the cosine. We then went on to look at finding a missing angle in a right angle triangle given two sides. So if we wanted to now find this angle right here, which we might call x or theta, and we had this length which was 8 and this one which is 7, we could go ahead and use the ratios. So in this particular case, we've got the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So 7 is the adjacent, 8 is the hypotenuse. So we could use the cosine to find the missing angle. If you need to recap those videos, please go back and watch them as we're now going to move on to what we would call scaling triangles or triangles where we don't have a perpendicular height. So we're still going to use these, but we're now moving on to triangles like these ones shown. So let's see when we would use the cosine rule and the sine rule. It's easiest to think about the cosine rule first. So we're going to look at the cosine rule and we're going to look at this now to find a missing length. So a missing length. So just jotting this down, if we want a missing length in a non-right angle triangle, we can use the cosine rule. In this particular case, to find a missing length, we would have two known sides. So two known sides and an enclosed angle. So if I just explain what this means, enclosed angle. So if I just draw a quick sketch of a triangle, I'll draw one below. What we're going to have is the following. So if we have now this scenario and I want to find a missing length, let's say I wanted to find this length right here and we didn't have a right angle triangle, we could find this length which I'm going to call A. This now would be the enclosed angle which I'm going to call big A and then we would have B and C. So if we've got B and C and the enclosed angle, we can go ahead and find that value of A. So if I just quickly sketch a different triangle, let's say we wanted to find this length right here, and I'll just call this X, and we had an enclosed angle, and that angle was a, a 65 degrees, and then we have the other length. So let's say this one was now, we'll put on that this is going to be 10, and this one was going to be 12. We could go ahead and find the length X. So we've got an enclosed angle and two known sides. Enclosed just means it's between B and C. We can also use the cosine rule to find missing angles. So missing angles. If we look at that, to use the cosine rule for finding a missing angle, we would need to have three known side lengths. So if I just jot this up, let's just write this down, we would need three known side lengths. So three known sides. So for example, now if I wanted to find now this angle right here, I could go ahead and find that. If I had this one, let's say that this is going to be uh, 10, let's say that this is going to be 12, and let's say that this one is going to be 13. We could go ahead and find that angle by using the cosine rule. So missing lengths, we need an enclosed angle and two known sides. A missing angle, we need three sides of the triangle. So when are we going to use the sine rule? Well we're going to use the sine rule when we have scenarios where we don't have those enclosed angles. So if we wanted to find a missing length, what we're going to have for a missing length, and we'll jot this down, we need now two known angles and one side. 
So two known angles and one side. So two known angles and then one side. So for example, if I drew up a triangle, let's go ahead and do that. What we might have is something that looks like this. So if I've got two known angles and one side, let's say that this is going to be at 45 degrees. And I'm going to say that this one is going to be, let's make that 62 degrees. And I want to find this length right here, which I'm just going to call X. And I have this one just here. Then we can go ahead and find that. So we can see now that we don't have this enclosed angle. We can simply use now the sine rule. So for a missing length, I need two known angles and one side. If I want now a missing angle using the sine rule, so missing angle, we're going to have two known sides. So we'd have two known sides. So just jotting this down. And we'd have one angle. So if we look at it now, let's just go ahead and draw another triangle. Uh, we'll have something like this. So for example, now if I wanted to find a missing angle, let's say we have this angle right here, and we'll call this angle theta. We saw theta in the last video. Let's say that I've got this one just here. So two known sides. Let's say that this is going to be 10. Let's say that's going to be 40 degrees. That's my one known angle. And let's say that this one is going to be 7. Then we could go ahead and find that. So that is what we call a non-enclosed angle. So what we're going to do in this video is just look at these examples and which we would use to do what. In the next video, we're going to look at some basic sine rule problems. I'll introduce the sine rule then. In the following video, we will look at some basic cosine rule problems. and We'll introduce the cosine rule then. And then in later videos, we will look at the ambiguous case of the sine rule. And then where we've got a combination of the sine rule, the cosine rule, trig ratios and Pythagoras. So let's look at this one right here. So if I look at this one now, I've got three known sides. So I could use the cosine rule to find an angle in this one. So this one would be a cosine rule problem. We could find a missing angle given three sides. So that's that one just there. Once we've got some of these, we might have to use double applications. So in some cases, we might use the cosine rule followed by the sine rule and vice versa. This one just here, we have an enclosed angle and two known sides, so we could find the length of this one by using the cosine rule. So this would initially be a cosine rule problem. If we look at this one right here, we could find now a missing angle using the sine rule. So for example, if I wanted to find this angle, we've got now two known sides and one known angle, so that would be a sine rule problem. If we look at this, we have two known angles and we have one side. This would be a sine rule problem to find one of the missing sides or lengths. If we look at this one, we have two known sides and an enclosed angle, so we could find the length uv, and that would be using the cosine rule as we have an enclosed angle. This one just here, we have three known side lengths, so we could use the cosine rule to find a missing angle. Remember, you can find each of these. Once you've found two of them, you found the third one, as the sum of all of the angles in a triangle will give you 180 degrees. So that's a cosine rule problem here. This one, we have two known sides and one angle, so we could find a missing angle using the sine rule. This one right here, we have now this non-enclosed angle, so we would use the sine rule for this one to find a missing angle. We've got two known sides and we want an angle, so that would be a sine rule problem. If we look at this one, we've got one known side, two angles, and we can go ahead and use the sine rule to find a missing length. If we look at this one, two of the uh, sides and an enclosed angle, cosine rule to find the length right here of that if we wanted to find that. If we look at this one right here, three known sides, so we could use the cosine rule to find any one of these angles. So I could find any of those and I'd use the cosine rule to do it. Exactly the same, three known sides, finding an angle using the cosine rule. Exactly the same here, we've got now three known sides, cosine rule. This one, we could use the cosine rule to find the length of PQ. So that's the cosine rule. 
this one right here, cosine rule to find the length ML as we've got an enclosed angle and two known sides. Then this one right here, we've got two known sides and one angle, so we could use the sine rule to find a missing angle. So let's recap. We would use the cosine rule when we wanted to find a missing length if we had two known sides and an enclosed angle. We would find a missing angle given three sides. The sine rule, we can find missing lengths given at two known angles on one side. And now with the missing angle, we could have two known sides and one angle to find that missing angle. So there is a brief introduction. Don't go or go forward and just forget that these exist because at times we're going to be using Pythagoras theorem and we're going to be using the trig ratios to solve problems. These are still very valid and certainly we would use them for right angle triangles rather than using these ones. You can of course use the sine and cosine rule for right angle triangles but this is a lot easier. So in the next video we're going to start looking at the sine rule.